the video you just watched was entirely created with Pika Labs using Pika 1.0. So the question is, can you also create a similar video? Absolutely, you can create a similar video by combining multiple clips. You can generate all these clips using simple text prompt, which I will demonstrate in this video. Moreover, you have the options to add voiceover. For instance, in my videos, I have not used any voiceover or transitions. However, you can enhance your video by incorporating transitions, voiceover and effect to give it a more cinematic and animated feel. Now let's dive into the video and explore a tutorial on using Pika Labs. I will guide you through the features of Pika 1.0, how to write prompts and provide you with all the necessary information in this tutorial. To get started with Pika 1.0, you can simply visit pika.art slash login. As you know, there is no need to wait to join the waitlist to get access to Pika 1.0 because they have already announced in the Pika Lab Discord server that Pika 1.0 is now accessible to everyone. You can now directly sign up or sign in. From here, you can choose to sign in with your Google account or sign in with your Discord account. I will sign in with my Discord account. Then you can simply click on authorize to give it authorization to Pika Labs for your Discord. Now you can see we are on Pika 1.0. Here are some example videos visible on explore page. These are the videos that are generated by people or maybe provided by Pika community. This serve as an illustration that you can explore on the explore page. Additionally, in my library, you can see on the library where I have created and you can find all the clips of the video that you just watched when the video started. All these video clips were generated using multiple prompts and I was learning about the type of the prompt to use. You can see these video clips and more in my library. However, I have deleted many videos as the page become full. I was discovering how to write actually best prompt so that I can get desired video output. Now to get started, let me explain a few things here. First, when you're getting started, you will see a prompt bar. You know, it is level as describe your story where you will enter your prompt. Next, there is an icon resembling a star. It functions as a button to generate the video. Now let me explain some of the additional important features features. Below this prompt bar, you can see you have the options to include reference image or videos. This feature allows you to input images or videos that serve as a references for your desired output. You might have noticed this feature in mid journey where we input reference images to get output similar to the reference images. Similarly, here you add images or videos to guide Pika Labs to generate similar videos. This serve as a reference point to the desired output. Then you have the options to select video settings. First, we have aspect ratio options, which essentially determines the expected format of your video, whether it's horizontal like landscape or vertical portrait or square format and like some other formats as well. You can choose from various aspect ratios to align with your preferences. Next, we have frames per second that is FPS and I suggest you to stick to the default setting in you know, 24 FPS for optimal results. This is a common and recommended choice for generating videos. Being on, there is a motion control feature. By clicking on motion control, you'll find settings related to camera control for your videos. This feature allows you to manipulate the camera and change the movement and orientation of your generated videos. It's a straightforward set of options. You can see this each icons here and each icon serve a distinct purpose. First, there is a pan and this control allows you to move camera's view horizontally. You can pan the camera to the left or right using the corresponding arrow buttons. Moving on to tilt, this control lets you move the camera view vertically. You can tilt the camera up and down using the up and down arrow buttons. Now let's talk about rotate. This control enables you to rotate the camera's view, the two circular arrow buttons indicate clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation. Next, we have zoom. This control allows you to change the camera's zoom level. The plus symbol indicates the zooming in and the minus symbol indicates zooming out. Now, let's discuss the strength of motion in Picalab's motion control setting. This parameter plays a crucial role in determining the speed or intensity of the motion. It adds an another layer of control to your video generation. Let me give an example. Imagine you ask Picalab's to generate a scenario where you're zooming into an object using a drone from the sky to a close up perspective. In that case, you might want to use a higher strength like 3 to 4 to make zoom happen quickly. It's important to choose the strength of motion based on what your video needs. Now, the final thing we have are the parameters. In parameters, we have negative prompt. Negative prompts are like a set of instruction that helps AI to understand what you don't want in your video. For example, if you have seen AI generate something with a deform anatomy, like wide shape of hands or body parts, deform fingers, sometimes you see six finger and sometimes four fingers that usually not happen in human and you want to avoid that you can use negative prompts. In the parameter section, you can specify negative prompts. It's like telling AI, hey, don't give me videos with deformed or badly shaped body parts. So you might write something like this, deformed anatomy or bad anatomy, ugly or oversaturated or something like that to let the 
AI know what to avoid. This way you are guiding the AI to focus on generating videos with good realistic anatomy. It adds another layer of control to make sure the output aligns better with your expectations. Okay, let's talk about the seed value in parameter section. It's pretty straightforward. The seed value is like unique number that you can input. When you generate a new video, you receive a seed value, something like what you can see here. This value essentially adds a level of randomness to the generated videos. For example, each video has its own seed value. If you were to keep a seed value from a previous video right, and paste it here, the AI will use that as a starting point. This means the output video will share similarities with the previous one, maintaining you know certain consistency. This will basically help you when you are generating consistent characters to use in movies or in your every personal videos. Next, let's discuss the consistency with the text. Imagine you are not getting the desired results despite entering specific text prompt. In such cases, you can enhance the consistency of the text. If you are not getting your desired output, you can adjust the parameter. Let's say to 20. Let's say currently is 12 and if you increase to 20, which can significantly generate the results with what you are seeking. Now, I trust I have thoroughly explained all this feature. If there is anything I have missed, rest assured I will cover in the another video. So, let's shift our focus to actual task at hand creating videos inside Picalabs. Let's get started by creating our first video on Picalabs. To start, type a descriptive prompt that specifies exactly what you want. For example, let's say I will type a wolf under the moonlight. Currently, we are not using any reference images or videos or any other features. We will go with the default setting. We will let the tool generate based on the given prompt. Once you have entered your prompt, you can hit enter or click this icon to proceed. Then you will notice a thumbnail appearing indicating that your video will start generating soon. So you have to wait for some moment as it may take some time. You can observe that a video has been successfully generated. To get a closer look, you can simply click on this full screen icon to expand the video. Upon expanding, you will see a larger screen displaying the moon and smoothie moving wolf. The result is quite beautiful. If you wish to download this video, click on the download button. Now let me explain what all these options are. First we have a retry button. If the generated video is not your liking, you can simply click on retry for a better outcome. Let me illustrate with an example. I know that this video is good, but we want Want to see whether the retry approach can generate a better video. If you are not satisfied with the current video, you can generate a better version by clicking on the retry button. As you click on retry, it starts generating another video. You can see the loading thumbnail of the new video. You can see the first and the second video being generated side by side. Now in the meantime, you can also generate some other videos. For example, you can type something like a spacecraft traveling towards the sun and then press enter. You can generate two videos, three videos, as many as videos together. The first video will be generated first and when it's done the second video will be automatically generated and the third one and and so and so on this way you can create multiple videos with different prompts so you can see that this is going to see this is the video that we retried the one with the wolf it looks good but the tail of the wolf seems very long and the eyes appear somewhat dangerous and that's what we need the background hover is awesome there is a slight deformation in the body of the wolf but you can use a negative prompt to control that if you want to download it simply click on the download button additionally you will notice a delete button here in case you want to remove the video. If you click on this delete button, the video will be permanently deleted and there is no option to restore it. I suggest you not delete it unless you are sure it's not important as you may need the videos for reference later on in some cases. Then you can see there is an I button here. Click on it to get information. As I explained previously, you have details such as negative prompts like deformity and anatomy, then aspect ratio, seed number etc. All are explained here. These pieces of information help you understand what parameters were used in general generating this specific video. Now you can see the reprompt option. Let me explain that. Suppose you want to reprompt because even after clicking on retry multiple times, you are not getting the desired video. In that case, click on reprompt. Your prompt will automatically appear here and if you check the parameters, you will notice they are also copied automatically. This eliminates the need for manual copying. This feature is beneficial when you need to track of the videos for future reference. By clicking on reprompt, you will get the necessary information including the prompt and any reference images or videos. Now let's explore the types of the prompts that work effectively on Picalabs and the animation style or videos it excel in generating. One notable observation is that Pika 1.0 performs exceptionally well in creating animation with Marvel Studio style. While it may not reach the quality level of Marvel animation, I have noticed that it still produces impressive results. To generate videos in the style of Marvel Studios, you can easily enhance your prompt by adding the phrase Marvel Studios animation style at the end. The next is the Pixar style, which work exceptionally well in Pika 1.0 showcasing one of this AI strength to generate videos in the style of Pixar you can easily enhance your prompt by adding the phrase Pixar style at the end of the prompt. Pika Labs also improved in generating anime style videos for 
optimal result with anime style videos, consider using the keyword Studio Ghibli style at the end of your prompt. It is also good at generating Disney style animation videos. You can try that too. The most important thing to get better results is to explicitly specify the style you desire. Otherwise, Picalabs get confused and generate videos with random styles. For example, if you want a person to be blogging and film himself with a camera, you could include keywords like blogging. To get more specific, you can add more detailed keywords like travel blogging to refine your results. Now the next aspect of Pika Labs that I would like to discuss is the ability to extend your videos. Initially the videos are generated for 3 seconds but you have the option to add another 4 seconds to any generated video. In the initial trailer of this video you might have noticed Thanos scene where I extended the video clip up to 7 seconds. Here you can see this scene depicting the Avengers standing united and prepared for battle against Thanos. This showcases the flexibility of extending videos beyond their initial duration. And another example is the video featuring Thanos standing tall. Initially it was 3 seconds clip but I extended it to 7 seconds allowing for a more detailed portrayal of the scene. So how can you extend a video to that duration? It's quite simple. You can take the example of this video featuring the wolf under the moonlight. So we will try to expand this video. Now it's 3 seconds so we will make it 7 seconds. To do that I will make it a full screen by clicking here. Now what I will do is you can see add 4 seconds. Click on add 4 seconds and now you can see in the prompt bar first we have the prompt and then the original video will be used as reference. You can also change the prompt if you want. Add whatever you want in the additional part. For example, you can make it the wolf is running or you can keep it the original prompt. To extend the video, I will simply click on generate. Now you can see the video started generating. So we have to wait for some moment. Now you can see that the video is finally generated. If I make it a full screen, you can see that the video is now 7 seconds long. I prompted it to generate the wolf is running but it has not done that. Instead the wolf is looking toward us. But anyhow, the video is not deformed at all and it's looking good. You can also extend this video again up to 4 seconds. If you click on add 4 seconds, it will extend it again. It is literally helpful if you want to add more seconds to make the video a bit longer. Then you can see that we have this upscale option. When you click on this upscale, the quality and the resolution of the video will improve and as well as the size of the video will increase. So we will get a better quality video. Let's click on the upscale here to enhance this video. After clicking on upscale, another version of the video will be created and this will be a better version. Upscaling is a nice feature that you might have seen in the tools like Midjourney or Leonardo AI where you can enhance images to improve their quality. Any blurry or unclear elements in the video will become clearer through upscaling. Now let's wait for some moment to see the updated video. So finally you can see the upscale version of the video. It's clearer and smoother providing an improved visual experience. This is the result of upscaling and adding 4 seconds to the video. In this way you can optimize your video using these features. Now let's proceed to explore some additional functions. Now let's dive into the negative prompting and how you can utilize it to enhance the generated version. In the video I have created an animated depiction of the angry hulk prepared for battle in the style of Marvel Studios animation. The initial clip is 3 seconds long and I have extended it to 7 seconds. But when I opened it in full screen you may notice slight deformation in the hulk teeth and face. Now let's explore if we can rectify or control these deformations using negative prompting. First I will close the current window and reopen the 3 second clip. After opening the clip in full screen view I will click on add 4 seconds. Now I will go to the parameters by clicking on this icon. Now in the negative prompt section I will input negative prompts such as deform, bad anatomy, distort, oversaturated and warp. You can also include other keywords like blurry or ugly etc. When you enter this keyword you are basically telling Pika Labs that what you don't want in your video. Now I will click on generate and we will observe how this adjustment change the generated video particularly in controlling the deformations compared to the first 7 second clip. Now you can see that the video has been generated and if we view it in the full screen there is a slight change in the face but the teeth still remains deformed and inconsistent but overall it looks good let's say you are not getting the desired results you can try multiple times using distinct negative keywords it may work that's how you incorporate negative prompts to get better results although i cannot demonstrate it now let me try another one you can observe that i have generated a video here a man playing football in pixel style initially it was a three seconds video then i extended it to seven seconds however you can notice that the eyes of the guy are inconsistent after 3 seconds. To address this, we will attempt to generate it again and see if the negative prompting can rectify the issue. After opening the video in full screen, I will click on add 4 seconds. Now in the prompt section, click on the parameters to add negative prompts. I will input some negative prompts keyword like deform, oversaturated, blurry, bad anatomy, inconsistent eyes and distort. Let's see if it works. Now we will run the prompt and observe the results. Alright, you can see that the video is generated. When I open this, you will notice that the eyes are consistent till 3 seconds. However, as the video
video progresses, it becomes more inconsistent and deformed. Even though I run the prompt with negative prompts, it's still not working. It became even worse. I don't know what's going on. You can try it on your own and see what works for you. I have tried this with negative prompts, but it is not consistently effective. Maybe Picalabs is in the initial phase and over time it might improve. Now let's discuss the other important features that we have not covered yet in the video. These include like text inconsistency, how to use this text consistency feature for better video generation. Then we have aspect ratio consideration such as portrait or landscape videos and the use of reference image and videos to generate the exact videos. Th these are all the essential features that we have not discussed. And there are some other features to explore such as camera motion control like rotation, zoom, pan and tilting. We have not demonstrated example for these motion control parameters. Additionally, there is a video to video AI feature which allows you to make video from a video. Then we have the expand canvas feature. These features allows you to expand the size of a video by generating the required canvas. For instance, transforming a portrait video into a landscape one. Another important aspect we have not covered yet is modifying a region in a video. For example, you have generated video where there is an open field but there is no football. So if you want to put a football in the field, you can just select that region and put a football in that place. So this is how modifying region works. So I thought I would cover everything in this video itself. However, you know, I realized that the video would become very lengthy. So I think that it would be more practical to create another video or a series of videos. I plan to make a playlist for Pika Labs allowing me to show more examples and provide a step by step understanding. In the next video, we'll specifically cover reference images, exploring how to generate videos using them. So this includes like discussions on video to video and image to video processes. I believe this approach will offer a more detailed explanation. So you may find the next video in the i button and I will create a separate playlist. You can find it in the video description and at the end card. If you want to generate a video similar to the initial trailer you saw, you can use the prompt I will provide in the video description. You can use it in the cloud AI to generate the exact script that I have. Let me show you which prompt I am talking about. So this is the prompt that I have used here on cloud AI. You can simply use this prompt to generate the script and video prompts for your trailer. But first you have to replace the word Studio Ghibli with whatever you want. If you want Marble Studio style, you can input Marble Studios animation style. If you prefer Disney style, you can input Disney style. You can also put input Pixar style or their movie style and according to your preference. And the other place where you have to replace the word right here is Marble Comics inspired. Instead of Marble Comics, you can write Disney style, Pixar style or Pixar movies, anything that you would like to include here. When you put this prompt inside Cloud AI, you will get an output like this. It will generate scenes for you. For example, the title scene will be Marble Studios Presents. Then it will show you the duration of these scenes like 3 second scene, 6 second scenes and so on. You'll get both script and prompts for Pika Labs to generate your trailer. That's how I generated the trailer that you saw at the beginning of the video. One bonus that I'll provide you is the template that I used in my trailer. You can use the same template to generate your video. You can find the link to the template in the video description and it is very simple to edit in Canva. That's how I edited and you can do the same. That's all for the video. In the next video, we'll talk about the image to image and video to video generation as I mentioned. You can also check the playlist. Thank you so much for watching.